Welcome into TYT's The Conversation. It is your host, Adrian Lawrence. And today I am joined by the founder and executive director of Live for USA. That is Pastor Michael McBride. Welcome, Pastor Mike. Whoa, man. Great to be here with you. Thank you for having me. I'm very, very glad to have you here because there are a lot of conversations going on right now as there is almost this faux idea of a crime spike and people are kind of taking a tough on crime stance. But as I understand it, that's not the answer, right? It not only is it not the answer, history has proven to us why it is a horrendous response. Uh, we have seen uh, the, the, the response of this country to the worst conditions of black folks living in urban America, brown folks living in urban America, poor folks living in urban America to be punitive at best with no uh, scaled up response for healing. And so over the last five to six years, we have seen uh, the lowest expressions and the lowest numbers of violence in our country uh, because of the work of public health interventions. And we need elected officials, particularly those who claim to care about public safety in our communities, not to be seduced by a 1990s tough on crime approach that literally destroyed our communities just as much as the violence did. Now, I definitely know as well that the total tough on crime stance in the 90s definitely destroyed our communities. And what they did to a certain extent was give fodder for prison privatization, as well as creating the system that our government wants to uphold. So I guess in terms of seeing those underhanded really goals going on when it comes to government, state, local level, even the federal level in terms of where they want their funding to go and who they want to incarcerate. I guess what is kind of your approach for essentially undermining that? So I, I try to explain it with you know really easy to understand examples. If you have a toothache, you don't pull out all the teeth in your mouth because you have one toothache. You actually have a targeted response to the tooth that is causing you the most challenges. Similarly, we know because of all the data over the last decade or so that less than 1%, sometimes it's less than half of 1% of the population of your city is driving almost 60% of the gun related shootings and homicides. So our focus should be on the less than 1% of our population that is caught in violent cycles and conflicts. We should use public health approaches. We should hire those who used to be involved in that life. We should scale up guaranteed basic income for these individuals. We should offer healing and we should offer trauma response care for them. But what we should not do is use violence to try and solve violence. We ought to use this growing industry called community violence interventions to scale up these strategies, focus on the 1%. We have found in cities when we've done this, that we have seen a 25, 30, sometimes 40% reduction in gun related shootings and homicides without growing the population of prisons and racial profiling and police shootings. This is the response. The Biden administration knows it's the response. That's why they put $5 billion in the Build Back Better Act to scale this up. We need mayors and governors, city councils and county supervisors to put this money in the community on the ground, force these partnerships and let's save lives without growing the prison industrial complex. Oh, absolutely. I completely agree. Uh, that is something we definitely need to kind of end this whole carceral state and for that to be the first and almost only answer at times. My bigger concern is those um, leaders out there who want to feed the carceral state, who want to incarcerate a segment of us to keep up whether uh, it's class, race, whatever the biases are. And so I don't necessarily know how to reach them, uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, Dr. King, you know, in honor of his birthday that we all will be celebrating over the weekend and this week, he says that the greatest impediment, the stumbling block to racial justice in this country is not the Ku Klux Klan, it's the white moderates. We have to figure out how do we ensure that so called progressives, now white and black, do not suffer from a dearth of an imagination. Many of them are playing politics with public safety. They know that if they need to score political points, if they need to seem like they're being responsive, they're gonna call for more cops. They're gonna increase the police budgets. How can you increase the police budgets less than one year or two years uh, you know, after we all filled the streets and said that we were gonna reimagine public safety? We must organize, uh, we must put pressure, and we must scale up the strategies that we know work. We must confront our elected officials 
in these cities and counties where our communities are disproportionately impacted by gun violence. We must put these strategies in front of them and then demand that they implement them. Uh, the Live Free campaign along with the Black Brown Peace Consortium and our fun peace comrades all across the country. We are putting this pressure on elected officials. We are not allowing them to use their limited imagination to continue to use tough on crime tactics when we know public health strategies with the federal and state and local resources can literally save lives. It's up to us to organize and push them to do it. Yes, and pushing them is so incredibly important. And you're absolutely right about these progressive leaders out there who are essentially claiming that they're gonna help enforce and make change in one hand. And then they're out in these streets essentially announcing new proposals. For example, Governor Gavin Newsom just announced the whole effort to locate hundreds of millions of dollars really in grants to crack down on organized retail theft that they're claiming is going on right now in California. And to really help local law enforcement combat this and prosecute these accused criminals. Yet it's been really, I guess, really shared widely that there's not really a spike in retail theft. And this isn't something that's necessarily going on, but it's clearly kind of a sentiment in order for law enforcement to feel like they still have something to do. Is that accurate? We know, and many of us did some actions. We call them actions, we call them public kind of responses to the retailers associations. Folks like Target, folks like Lucky's, folks like Safeway, who were actually against the kind of um, decarceration strategies we want at the state level. They were putting out all these fake and false numbers and ads trying to scare the voter to not vote for a decarceration movement in California. We know these individuals are using false data and scare tactics to say that there is a crime boom, when in reality, we, we need to have a conversation about desperation. Why is it that in this moment, people are experiencing such desperation? People are experiencing such hunger for food, housing, shelter, clothes, that they may find themselves resorting to certain kinds of uh, easy to uh, accomplish petty thefts. We ought to ask ourselves why in the richest state in the country, one could argue that our economy in California is bigger than many other countries across the world. Why is it that we're on one hand saying we're gonna scale up basic income strategies like my friend Michael Tubbs is helping the governor to do, but then on the other hand, play footsie with the police and these retailers that are trying to criminalize our people. You can't have it both ways. Let's go all in for peacemaking, all in for opportunity, all in for healing, all in for public health responses to any sorts of crimes and activity that are causing folks to feel unsafe. That is the solution that we need progressives, progressive governors, progressive mayors, progressive city council members to champion and not fall into a tough on crime narrative, trying to see who can be more tough than the Republicans. I say forget the Republicans. We know they're autocrats, authoritarians, racists and white supremacists. Let's compete with ourselves and see who can be the most progressive at saving lives while keeping our community safe. Yes, that is something that I think a lot of us definitely want as progressives and having leadership that also believes in that and is willing to put resources and truly implement the strategies that are necessary to change that. I'm a huge fan. And so I love the fact that you are working hard at this as the executive director of Live Free USA. Is there anything else that you are doing as well that you really hope takes off in 2022? Absolutely. You know, what? one thing that we know for sure is that there is an intersectional nature of our work. That while we may be focusing a lot of our attention on the issue related to gun violence, we also have to focus on continuing to address criminal justice reform, continuing to repeal and abolish the death penalty in this state. Why are we still even contemplating a state executions in our state or in any state in this union? We have to continue to fight against the voter suppression tactics that are cropping up all across this country. So we have a, a, a lot of issues that all braid together to ensure that human rights can be extended to the most vulnerable in this country. So the Live Free USA Network has easily you know, several dozen organizations in over 40 cities across the country that are organizing people of faith, people with criminal convictions, families that are directly impacted by gun violence, by the criminal justice system, We're organizing churches, neighborhood groups, street organizations, Pookie, Ray Ray, even some law enforcement folks are rocking with us. Why? Because we know 
that the best solution to the worst conditions of our community is for us to create a belonging sense, a network of belonging, and a sense that we are all belonging to one another. Dr. King called it the beloved community. That's what the Live Free Work is all about. That's excellent. And it sounds like you were out there doing good work, bringing people in and making sure they feel and know that they belong and making meaningful change. And so if there are individuals out there who want to get involved, who want to uplift, who want to partner or um, join Live for USA, I guess what is the best way that they could go about doing that? Are there marches? Are there different events? Yeah, you, you're going to see a Live Free event coming to a city near you for sure. Uh, for the next several months, there are going to be some amazing partnerships that we're going to roll out. If you want to be active and connected with us, visit our website, livefreeusa.org, and you can sign up for all of our mailing uh, materials. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Instagram. Uh, we are building a movement. It is an open uh, source movement, meaning we want everybody who wants to rock and get down. Uh, just got to love the streets. You got to love folks in the neighborhoods. Uh, we are literally combating combating anti-black racism, all the forms of human hierarchy. Uh, come on and let's be a part of this movement. Let's save a lot of lives, but more importantly, uh, let's build the beloved community, it's time. Yes, it is indeed time in honor of Dr. King, as well as all of the other movers and shakers out there looking to break down racial bias, class bias, all of these things that hold us back. It's such a powerful thing. And so we very, very much appreciate all the work that you are doing as the founder, executive director of Lift for USA, as well as largely just an individual lifting up the message. If people are looking to follow you on social media, where can they find you? You can follow me at I'm Pastor Mike underscore. Uh, I'm Pastor Mike underscore. And uh, yeah, man, it'd be great for you to follow us and, and uh, be a part of the movement. We really, really believe that there's room at the table for everybody. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Pastor Michael McBride, founder and executive director of Live Free USA. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.